Hi everyone, good morning. For today's lesson, we will tackle about the chi-square base measure of association, which is the phi and the Kramer's B. So the measures of associations are descriptive statistics that summarize the overall strength of the association between the two variables. So the objectives of our study for today is that at the end of our lesson, you will be able to calculate and interpret phi and the Kramer's V. So for you to interpret and calculate phi and Kramer's V, you have to first calculate the chi-square. So the very first step for us to calculate the phi and the Kramer's V is to know how to calculate the chi-square. So I have here a sample of boys and girls where asked to choose one color from the three options, blue, green, and yellow to paint in the room with the following result. So here's the table. So the first step is to calculate the row and the column of this table and we come up with this result. So the second step in calculating the chi-square is to calculate the observed and the expected frequencies. So how to solve the expected and observed frequencies? So the second step in calculating our chi-square is to calculate our observed and expected frequencies. So I have here an example and I will show you on how I get that answer. So we have here number one, E63. We have here E63. So we will have to compute the expected and the observed frequencies. So we have to calculate the E63. So we have to multiply 196 times 148 divided by 400 and we get the answer 72.52 and for another example we have e91 this is e91 so the column and the row will be multiplied and will be divided into the grand total so we have the 204 times 210 divided by 400 so we get an answer 110.67 and for our e7 we have 196 times 35 divided by our 400 and we got the answer 17.15. So that is how I get the expected frequencies and observed frequencies. So after getting our expected frequency, the next thing we do is to subtract the observed minus expected. And then we get this one, negative 9.50. And then we squared this one to get this one, 90.6304. And we will divide this negative 90.6304 to the expected data, which is 72.52. And we have the answer here, 1.2470. 1.2470. And then after that, we will do the same to the other data. So 85 minus 75.48, we have 9.52. We will square this one to get the answer 90.6304. And we will divide this one to the expected data, 75.48. And you will have the answer here, 1.2007. Then, 
after getting all the data, you will sum up here to get the chi-square statistics, which is 21.364. So, after getting this chi-square statistics, you are now ready to get the phi and the Kramer's V. So, after we calculate for the chi-square, we can now calculate for the phi. So, what is a phi? Phi is frequently used chi-square based measure of association for 2 by 2 tables. What does it mean? It means that the tables with 2 rows and 2 columns. I have here a fictitious data and the first thing you do is to know if is there an association of some kind between the accreditation and employment and is there a relationship between these two variable so for you to compute for the phi the first thing you do is to compute for the chi-square so the chi-square for this fictitious data is 10.78 And we have here the employment by accreditation status percentage. So for the working as social worker, we have a total of 40%. For not working as social worker, we have a 60% with a total of 100%. Solving for R5. After we get our chi-square, which is 10.87, we are now ready for the calculation of R5. So our formula is phi is equals to the square root of chi-square divided by the n. So phi is equals to the square root of 10.87 divided by 100 which is phi is equals to 0 0.33 what does it mean so 0 0.33 in our table it is greater than 30 it means that our variables has a strong relationship So I have here another example. So compute for the phi. So for you to compute for the phi, the first thing you do is to calculate for the chi-square. So after getting the chi-square, which is 51.89, you can now compute for the phi. So R general formula for the phi is phi is equals to the square root of chi square divided by the n so phi is equals to the square root of chi square which is 51.89 times the n which is 175 and we come up with the answer 0. 55. So Kramer's V. What is Kramer's V? So Kramer's V is the most popular of the chi-square based measure of nominal association because it gives good norming from 0 to 1 regardless of table size when row marginals equal column marginal. The general formula for our Kramer's V is V is equals to the square root of chi square divided by n times rho minus 1 or column minus 1. To illustrate the competition for Kramer's V, 
Suppose you had gathered this data which shows the relationship between the membership and student organization and the academic achievement for a sample of college students and you will have a value of 0.05 level compute for the V. So how to calculate Kramer's V? So this is our general formula. V is equal to the square root of chi square divided by the n times r minus 1 or column minus 1. So we have here our chi square which is 31.5 and we have here for r we have 3 columns. That's why we have 3 minus 1. So we got r is equal to 2 and then we have here n is equal to 75 because we have 75 students in our table. So we have here to compute our V, we have V is equal to the square root of 31.5 over 75 times 2. So we have the answer. V is equal to the square root of 31.5 divided by 150. So V is equal to 0 0.5. Point 0.46 So if we say that RV is equals to 0 0.46 our table show that it is greater than 30 It means that it has a strong relationship between the two variables which are the academic achievement and the club membership of the students. So the key points of our lesson for today is that phi and Kramer's V as chi squared base measure of association and have the advantage of being easy to compute once the chi square is found. So you need to first Calculate the chi-square before you can compute phi and Kramer's V. So the next is that phi is used for 2 by 2 tables, while Kramer's V can be used at any table size. So both indicate the strength of the relationship, but values between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 have no direct interpretation. So one limitation of phi and Kramer's V is that they are only general indicators of the strength of the relationship. So of course, the closer this measure are to 0, 0, 0.0, the weaker the relationship and the closer to 1.0, the stronger the relationship so values between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 can be described as weak moderate or strong according to the general convention introduced earlier but have no direct or meaningful interpretation 